Welcome back to the Potter Shop Hollow Tree Farm Portable Sawmill. I'm Dave Boyd. Uh, I've got several videos out there that I have posted to help other sawyers kind of learn some of the tricks and uh, tips on running sawmills. And this one is a subject that's very dear to my heart because this is the most valuable lumber that you're ever going to cut on the sawmill. And yet you'll probably never sell a single piece of it. And the reason is we're going to be cutting blocking and stickers. Now the blocking gets your lumber pile up off the ground so air can flow under it. And the stickers are strips of wood that go between the layers of wood so that the air can flow through it to air dry your lumber. So when I first got my sawmill, I was so excited. I rolled a really nice walnut log on there and I made every mistake in the book on it. Not to mention the mistake of starting out with a really nice piece of walnut to begin with on my first cut. But the next thing I did wrong was in the way I stacked it, which was I just set it aside. I wanted to get on to the next log and see what was inside it. That's the fun part. And after about a year, I came back to that pile and thought, well, let's see what it looks like. It was still lying on the ground. No, it wasn't stickered, so the moisture was trapped between the pieces of wood. Uh, about 80% of it was twisted and warped. There was decay, of course, in the sapwood. And, and that 80%, basically, basically, was just nothing more than very expensive firewood and a hard-learned lesson. You need to plan ahead. Where are you going to put your piles of lumber? How are you going to get them off the ground? How are you going to get them to be air drying effectively? And also, how do you keep the rain off of them? So I've got a, uh, it's about a 16 inch diameter post oak log. And I always use my ugliest uh, logs for the stickers and the, and the blocking because nobody's going to see it anyway. And if it warps a little bit, it's no, not, an, not a big deal. And I basically shut down the mill uh, from production for maybe a couple of days even bring these up, get everything set up, and which I've got done for this video, and I'll show you the process. There are a number of different sawing patterns that we can use, but we're basically looking for two things. We want 4 by 4s that we can use for blocking, and we want uh, one by material that we can use for our stickers. Uh, what we're going to do is do two 4 by 4s right off the top, and then everything off the sides, the bottom, and one on the top, we're going to get for the stickers. So I could, I could go with four, possibly even six four by fours out of the center of this log. But I need stickers more than I need four by fours right now. So I'll just cut a couple of blocks and everything else out of this log will be stickers. Here's the first cut that will be re-sawn into stickers. Putting the slabs on blocks like this makes it easy to come in with a front end loader and move them later. That's just one way that planning ahead saves time and effort down the road. Be sure to keep all your stickers the same thickness so that the boards will lie flat while drying. Having a deck next to the sawmill saves a lot of lifting when the time comes to put the boards back on the mill for resawing.
These slabs will go on top of the stack later to add weight and shed water. Once you get the log squared into a camp, the boards come off pretty quickly. Now we're ready to cut the two 4x4s. I don't normally use a front end loader for small pieces like this, but it shows how easy it is to slip the forks in to move large beams. Now, we're ready to start cutting stickers. You can make a lot of them in a hurry this way, and I've never had too many. Now here's my secret for cutting stickers to length in a hurry. The jig is to set up for 42 inch stickers to match the length of the tractor forks. The half hour it took to build was well worth the time. Be sure to drop the log stops all the way down for the last cuts, otherwise you might nick one with the blade. Ask me how I know. Now, of course you can cut stickers as you go while you're cutting regular lumber too, just off the edgings and so forth. And that'll help out, but it's never enough. Sometimes you just gotta stop and make more. Since I know I'm going to be cutting 42 inch long stickers to match the length of the forks on the tractor, I start out with a log twice that length, 84 inches. I'll cut the stickers and then cut them in half to get the final length. A little air space between the stickers helps them dry out and avoid sticker stain in your lumber. I cut the blocking to the same length as the stickers. I stack them too high to get the lumber 8 inches off the ground. They're lighter and easier to handle than 4x8s. I also use them to separate the stacks vertically so I can get the loader forks between stacks to move them. The idea is to keep the stacks small enough that the loader can move them easily.
putting the stickers directly onto a pallet keeps them off the ground and it makes it easy to move the stack wherever you need it. Another advantage of having plenty of blocking and stickers is that you can go higher with your piles then you can stack them to save room around the drying yard. So this is what our stack finally looks like and what I've done is to try to make a pyramid of slabs so that each one kind of like tiles on a roof shed the water onto the next one and hopefully off the stack and uh, it pretty well distributes the weight as well so hopefully that'll pretty well keep everything underneath nice and flat. Well I hope you've uh, found a few things in this video that'll be helpful to you. And you'll find uh, what works for you, uh, depending on your uh, physical condition, uh, weight of the lumber, and logs, and uh, whatever equipment that you have available. So adapt what you've got, and adapt your capabilities. And the main thing is look for ways to make the machines do the work for you, and do, especially to do the heavy lifting and moving. Uh, your back will thank you for it. So until uh, next time, thanks for watching this video. Uh, thumbs up wouldn't hurt my feelings any uh, comment or two even if you disagree with something you see something that man that's stupid you should be doing it this way uh, by all means uh, put a comment in there uh, I'm not proud uh, that's how I've learned is from my own mistakes but also from advice from other people it's like they say uh, good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from poor judgment and you might also uh, check out the uh, Norwood Connect Forum. So until next time, I'm Dave Boyd, and thanks for stopping by the Potter Shop Hollow Tree Farm and Portable Sawmill.